um, it's a very simple kind of programming language. It's really easy to parse. The way it works is every time you see brackets, you try to find the closing bracket for this, and you have to imagine in your head that the computer is going to turn this into the result of that computation. So as an example, if I do plus one, two, it uses the infix notation instead of, sorry, the prefix notation instead of the infix notation. This means the computation I'm executing is plus, and it's over one and two. So this is going to turn into three. See, I get scalar three. And if I want to do different things with different orders, I can keep putting brackets. So as an example, if I do uh, plus three, four, what's going to happen here is three and four are going to be summed first, and then it's going to be summed with one. So we're going to get eight out of that, right? So if you don't understand the syntax at any moment, tell me, and I'll, I'll explain you how it works. But it's not as scary as it seems. And the reason why we wrote a Lisp, once again, is because it's really easy to write a Lisp parser and lexer and interpreter, whereas it's really hard to write a parser, lexer, and interpreter for imperative languages. Um, OK, so let's make some pod. The first pod I'm going to make is almost like an ID card for myself. So what's, what's this ID card going to have? And remember, we can only use numbers. So first, I have some form of like national ID. It's kind of like my user ID in this system. Um, I might have an age on it. I know that the proper way to do this would be date of birth, but we'll skip that. So I'm 26. And also, in my, in my ID card, I have the zip code I live in. I've never used zip code this much in my life, by the way. Zip codes are great because they're also a number thing about you instead of most other things. Okay.